Hey, this is Hardline to Storktoid's video game news podcast. I'm Jordan DeVore, and today I got some good people with me. Uh, way too many people, but we're going to try this out anyways. I have Brett Makadonsky. Hey, everyone. Uh, Hamza Aziz. Yo. Steven Hansen. I've got a cat in my lap. Good, good. And Dale North playing. I don't know what he's playing. I'm just going to be playing Vita the whole time. Is that well, cool? what, ga what game is it specifically? Something with uh, undies. Even Gaze, and I'm playing it because it came out today, and I'm behind on getting reviews done. I'm, not, I'm trying to pull Chris Carter and do like a thousand reviews a week, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm struggling to get three done. So I struggled to get time, right? I struggled to get one done. Yeah, the one too. I do in like a six month period, and I struggled to do it. So I I don't get it how he does it. Uh, but we have some news to talk about. There's actually a fair bit of stuff that's been going on lately that seemed kind of interesting to me anyway. Uh, most notably, at least for me, I'm not a PS Vita owner, but it was awesome to see that... So a bunch of the digital PSP and PS1 games are now... that, that weren't compatible with PS Vita and now are. And I've heard some people say that, like, all of them are, and I don't know if that's accurate completely, but uh, it seems like a lot of sought-after games now are, like uh, Portable Ops is on there, Spyro, Crash. Uh, yeah, that's good to see. It only took... What took so long? I don't understand. Like, Well, the weirdest thing is that some of these were playable depending on which region you were in. So I guess it was a licensing thing that was holding them up? I don't know. Like, we're just going to stop fucking with you this time and like just let you play these games because for no reason at all you could not play them before. It didn't really make sense to me, but... I'm glad. I is like it, how when this was revealed, people were like, is, is this an accident? Did, did they need to do this? Like, on Twitter, it's <laughs> yeah, <not>. I, know. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck is wrong with them. They have this amazing system, you know, uh, and this is the best color, by the way. Uh, and, like, the more games they put on it, the better it's going to be for them and for us. They're doing really good with this indie shit, but, you know, there's a whole bunch of back catalog stuff that they could have going on here, and they don't, so I don't... Sony... I feel like Nintendo is the exact same way. Oh my god, it works. They're, they're just, like, failing to use all these awesome games we would buy again. They're yeah, easily Super worse. Super Mario World on my 3DS. I know, you gotta, you gotta say Super Mario World, I agree. Yeah. Fucking Sony. I'll spit on your Vita. Actually, I won't, I love it. Don't you have, like, ten of them? Mm, I have three of them. <laughs> That's still too many. <laughs> Why do you need six? No, <laughs> I have six PSPs. Oh my god! <laughs> what do you use them uh, for? Door stops? <laughs> no, I, I, I had like three Game Boy Advances before I was even writing about games. You did it before it was cool. I used to. I handhelds are great. They're the best. Amen. That's all. That's what it boils down to. I could give you reasons why I have all these systems, but at the end of the day, I want to play all the handheld games. I would love to hear even a few. <laughs> <laughs> so one is a territorial thing. Um, okay. So the Vita specifically, you have to wipe your Vita uh, and delete your memory card if you want to change a territory. That's right. Okay. So if you play Japanese games at all, if you're an importer, you need to at least have two. I mean, you could go through the trouble every time of wiping it and redoing it, but you should at least have two if you're going to do that. Um, but I have three. That's just one more. It's not a big deal. For the PSP, I just kept all the cool ones they released along the way because they released so many different ones. Uh, limited color ones. Uh, and then the same thing for the territories there. You know, have a Japanese one, American one. 3DS the same way. I got two, three 3DSs. Is someone vacuuming? <laughs> yes. Just vacuuming That's and so calls good. and beeping. <laughs> Uh, my door my like corgis and start grooming them. <laughs> uh, welcome to Hardline Interruption Cast Edition. <laughs> yeah, this is hardly new. <laughs> That's what I talk to. <laughs> I talk to people that don't have portable game systems, and they just look at me like I'm a fucking psycho or something. Like, well, I love. I think it was on Twitter. So you were venting about uh, Mario. I guess I can say it was Mario Golf. And yeah. you said you like three or three yes. So it's like, well, at least you have five more. To back it is the one I hate the most. I really do hate the, um, the XL. Like I like the big nope. screen and and like, but if there's a permanent indention. I will probably like I want to I want to be buried face up so people can see the indention in my hand from the fucking corner of the 3ds. It's the worst, man. Like I don't understand. Well, 
I have a problem with that. You, may, you put rounded corners on your game systems so they don't dig into your palms. <laughs> Basics. You know, you know that nobody sees you after you're buried, right? <laughs> no, it'll oh, be like a monument. Like, out <laughs> through the dirt. Like, palm up. Like, look at this shit, Nintendo. That's what my grave's gonna say. This, the uh, statue that they erect of Dale North will be palm up. <laughs> it should make it'll be a statue. Statue. They need to make a cast of your hand, and that's like the tombstone is your hand just sitting there. There's my whole body, like, head down in disapproval, and then, like, one palm out, and just, like, blood and, like, barbed wire and shit coming out of one hole. <clears throat> the tombstone can read, please understand. <laughs> yeah, I threw down a 3DS because I was mad at a game, and I'm a child. Uh, and I was, I was immediately regretting the decision. I mean, I threw it down on a granite countertop. Um... Oh and my I like, gosh! Oh, I have more. I have more. Did it, br- did it bust? It seems like it suffered somehow. It's really <laughs> creaky now. Uh, and the screen did that full backwards flip that you never want a 3DS to do. Ooh. So, but when again, I, I hate the system. I one hate time, um, I was playing Elite Beat Elite Beat Agents on the original Fat Gray DS. That's a game thrower. <laughs> um, I didn't throw it. I punched the screen. Broke the screen. <laughs> That literally happened. Like, <laughs> Almost, it break, literally cracked the screen. I was like, well, I guess I can't play this anymore. More like elite bullshit agents. I screamed at that game. I love that game, by the way, but I screamed at that game. I, I did eventually beat it on whatever the hardest thing was. It made me so mad, but <laughs> God, that game. It's such a good game, but it's it a is. Big, you know, Mario, I like Embargo Rigger. Mario Golf's the same way. Um, there's, just, there's just shit that's just way too challenging in it for it to be a game that kids could ever potentially play, let alone human beings. Which is, the, is it that you're missing shots or opponents making shots that are unbelievable? or it's, it's that I'm in my late 30s, and I play golf games more than any game I've ever played, and I think I've played every golf game ever made aside for some bullshit PC ones, and this is including like the um, Neo Geo arcade ones, which I played religiously. I still play a golf MMO I have for eight years, Played every Hot Shots game. I, I I dominate leaderboards. If I lose a fucking golf game, it's a serious issue. It's a serious serious <laughs> issue. And if I if I lose on a course more than a dozen times, I'm gonna have to call bullshit. You know, like something's wrong with this game. It can't be me. That all said, once I started to learn a couple of systems that I wasn't grasping fully. Um, <laughs> That's always the worst feeling when you get so pissed and you're like cursing the developer. You're right. like, "This is bullshit. This isn't designed well." And then it's like, "Oh, I oh. Did something." And I did beat the game last night, so. Uh, so that's in the past now, I guess. Yeah. Hey, upside! I'm gonna get a new 3ds. I'm gonna get a white one, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know how much you could talk about this, but I'm guessing the mechanic you probably weren't uh, you were having issue with was the fact that you could. I forget what exactly it is, but you could change like the, the rotation and direction of how you hit the ball on the touch screen, essentially. Yeah. And how yeah. it how it like affect it's affected against the wind and everything, right? Uh, well, maybe not so much. Yeah, the wind thing is an issue. Again, this is all embargo record. We're not supposed to be talking about this, but who cares? Um, <laughs> hey, oh, it, well, you know what? I previewed this part, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. okay. Part. Yeah. The biggest thing, and this is this is just general 3ds business. This is the resolution of the game. It's too low. It is literally a problem. I like you can't see detail. You need to see fine detail for the grids that give you the distances, especially in in the short game on the putting. You can't see it. It's too fucking grainy and 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 um, uh, jaggedy. Like all the lines are jaggedy. Like what the fuck am I looking at? I'm trying to hit a ball here. And then when you play as a me, your head is so fucking big. You. Like, literally, I want to say 15% of your view is obscured by your character's head. In a golf game, move your fucking head. Like, there should be some way you can hit a couple buttons and move the camera around to make your guy transparent. But otherwise, you can't see what you're doing. You just putt and hope to God that you hit it in the right direction. You know? <laughs> what, do you, um, what do you think about the whole item blocks and stuff now like, uh, in, the, in the game? Like, is that... Something you've been going towards, or you've just been avoiding it because yeah, I mean it's gonna hurt your game. Otherwise, you know, like you lose a shot just going for an item block. You mean like in in the fun courses where you can like hit a golf ball towards an item block and earn an item, or yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a rip of Pomia. <laughs> oh, 
Hong has been doing that for almost a decade now. That whole mechanic, like earning coins, hitting things on the golf course, and picking up items, um, that's Pongya territory. Score one Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and then the worst part of the game is it's broken. Um, uh, the sound side of it's broken. So like, characters will say something on a loop that is like not even three seconds apart, and they'll say the same thing over. They'll just say "yay" over and over, or Donkey Kong will roar over and over, or you know, it's Mario will woohoo, and they'll do it on top of each other. So that's like, incredible. It's just like it sounds like that's so good. Dang, like shit coming out of your system. Can you record that? And I'm going to. Okay. It's, that's the very first thing I'm going to post. Even before my review, I'm going to post this because it's just hilarious. <laughs> that was total hilarious. vine right there. And then, and then the uh, your me, the character that he, the the sound that they have the characters uh, saying or making, it's like really like, I don't know, it's so snarky that you almost can't believe it. <laughs> wow, it's kind of it's kind of crazy to hear that a Nintendo, you know, developed yeah. published game here is like shitty. It really lacks polish. Yeah. Like, anyway, there's there's our there's fuck there's a review, man. I'm not even gonna write one. I'm just gonna plug <laughs> this video. Out. You don't even need to do this. Just include that little the part with the sound. Me ranting. Looping over yeah. each other. I was just yeah. gonna. I'm gonna find that thing and then loop the video. You know how you, those YouTube videos that loop something for 24 hours or whatever. <laughs> it's just gonna, gonna be the what it is is like the podium placement when you beat a match. They'll just make that sound for forever until you hit a button, and it's it's nightmare <laughs> fuel. It's scary shit, man. Anyway, was this developed by uh, Camelot? It is. It's Camelot. And Camelot's it awesome. Is. That's uh, surprising to hear. I was waiting for you to say, "Oh, this was developed by some, you know, some That's what I thought. shitty <laughs> games." But Camelot, wow. The credits rolled last night after I beat the game, and I was like, "Okay, that was cool. Whatever." The second thing that came up was Camelot. I was like, "How in the fuck?" You know, and let's not even get into the DLC side of things. If you check check the comments from our story yesterday on how people felt about this game being about half DLC. Yeah, that surprised me too. The fucking season pass from Nintendo. Yeah, the, I never thought I'd be writing about a season's pass for DLC for a Nintendo 3DS game. I don't necessarily hate it, and it's not expensive, and you do get good stuff for it, and I'm sure they're going to be great courses, but it's still weird, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's just kind of like, kind of showing what the future of Nintendo is trying to do here, because they, they have this, and they have that whole thing with Rusty's New Deal baseball game, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Where you can, uh, wait. I mean, it's interesting that you can like, negotiate the prices to buy the DLC for that game, but still, the fact that they're doing that just shows that Nintendo's starting to really head that way. Mm-hmm. Weirds me out. Rusty seems like a better... Like, it's a cool, interesting mechanic versus just like, hey, we have a season pass. I'm, I'm just so opposed to season passes in general. Have, have you guys ever bought one? I have not, personally. No. I've, I've, bought a, God, I've bought a few season passes, um, <laughs> and rarely have they ever paid off. Um, a lot of times, I'll just not be interested in the game by the time that uh, all the content comes out for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, with a lot of stuff... I bought the Bioshock Infinite one, and that one... I, I liked the content that I got with it, but it took almost a year for it to come out. Like, I had my Xbox One for four or five months by the time that then I went back to my 360 and played Infinite DLC just to kind of wrap up that story. So, um, I don't know. I, I almost always feel like I've gotten burned, at least to some degree. It's just, you know, varying levels the, of degrees. I know so, go ahead, there, there are a few instances of supposedly, like, really great DLC, like Minerva's Den or, or the Dishonored stuff, but I have, like... Not even season passes. I have literally only bought DLC for one game because I just hate <laughs> DLC. And what yeah. game? Uh, Gravity Rush. Oh, oh you love that game. Of course it was. They fucking had you on that one, dude. <laughs> God, they could release anything for that and you'd buy they, it. They would release the goddamn soundtrack in the West so I don't have to spend like $80 to import a CD. I wouldn't just, you know, get it illegally. Soundtrack is so good. Yeah. Um... I, so I posted a rant not too long ago, and it got it got a huge response. But I've never bought a piece of DLC ever, and I probably never will. If someone like like threatens my one of my corgis' lives or something, I might. But like other than that, I'm not gonna do it. I, like I'm so opposed. There's a lot of things I also haven't done, like when it comes to 
Like, it was the longest time before I played a free-to-play game, and now I'm just like, whatever, it's fine. Free-to-play is a viable thing, and of, of course it works. I mean, look, at it's the biggest thing in gaming now, but, like... I have to like the only stand I've ever made was uh, uh, DLC, and I don't. I just I'm not gonna do it, man. That, uh, there's, there's, honestly, not missing my stand until until Gravity Rush. I had to make an exception. I'm That's not, what I'm trying uh, to imagine. Like, what would be the thing that would make me buy DLC? Like, what would it be? Sorry, something corgi skin DLC or some shit. I don't think so. I don't think so. It would feel gross to me. It would be. It would be. It would be ruining the name of corgis. Like, I I, I couldn't do it. It's just downloadable corgis. I'm not opposed to DLC anymore it's, if it's, like, story content, like, say, um, Bioshock's, um... Fuck, what was it? Burial <laughs> Burial <laughs> scene. Uh, but when it's stuff like, you know, like, Saints Row 4... Does anyone hear that hissing? <laughs> it's the... Someone does not like DLC and they're hissing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's it's some spy from some game company like Ubisoft that really likes to make DLC and they're under your desk just like hissing at you. Uh, but no, it's the DLC like say like Saints Row Four. Like they release a story DLC. Cool. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But then they like release like clothing packs. That kind of stuff. That just, like, upsets me. Clothing and weapon skin packs. Call of Duty is really abusing that lately with skin. Good dog. <laughs> what? That, was the, you know, the that was the whole initial yeah, exactly. DLC controversy. It doesn't upset me, and I don't think there's a problem with selling it. And if people want to buy that shit, fine. But, like, I'm not going to. Right, I'm, I'm never going to buy it. I honestly don't it, think there's something wrong with paying $1.50 for a new dress or whatever. Like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's something like Saints Row, though, where it's, it's obvious that they're abusing that system, I feel like. Oh, like, yeah, that, that's the worst. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I guess this was really noticeable with Saints Row 3 and 4, where the, the stores and everything didn't have as much clothing as, like, Saints Row 2 did because they wanted to hold back a bunch of things and sell it piecemeal. Yeah. yeah. It's obvious when that kind of stuff happens. That's just really just fucking annoying, but that's the world we live in now. Mm-hmm. Or, say, a golf game where after three courses and a couple of practice things, you've beat the game. And then a press release goes out the same day that says, oh, there's more courses. They're, they're coming when you pay for them. What game was that? Mm, I don't know. Something that's embargoed that we may or may not have talked about <laughs> oh, on this podcast. Well, I didn't read uh, anything as far as what the exact details were as far as Mario Kart DLC goes. You get on at me for not reading my website. Look at you, man. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> But then there's, headlines. you get into the re- even worse situations where, uh, I don't know if any of us played Arkham Origins, but mm-hmm. they, like, straight up said, oh, I don't know if they literally said it, but they said that they were going to not work on fixing bugs and instead work on DLC. And so they, that just got new DLC, that oh, uh, yeah. Cold cold Heart or whatever DLC that came out. Um, so that's really shitty. Real cold Heart, not, fi- not fixing your game. That's the coldest heart of all. We're not going to fix the game, but here's some more shit you can buy that here's may not work because the game's broken. Yeah. Thanks, Warner Brothers. I mean, I'm not against DLC, but if I think back about all of the all of the purchases I've made, the overwhelming majority of them I could have totally not made and would have been happy. And most of my end in regret. I, I mean, like, Rock Band is its own sort of thing, but... Yeah. Yeah, the Rock Band's different. That's... I mean, that's content for a game yes. like you know and i honestly feel like the story like i don't want to buy it but the the story based you know another chapter of the thing as long as it wasn't obvious that this was held back mm-hmm. someone spent some time you know like the, the last of us uh what the hell that's behind that? yeah yeah that was good that's something worth buying mm-hmm. uh it was obviously it wasn't just like ripped out sure it used the game's engine and blah blah blah, blah but assets, but it wasn't, like, ripped out of the game and then plugged in later as DLC. Yeah, yeah. We're not stupid. We know when that shit happens. Um, I just feel so gross. I, this this, this, uh, this whole show wasn't about DLC rant, so let's not keep talking about it. Okay. We can talk about Watch Dogs, which will probably have tons of DLC. <laughs> I'm, sure <it> <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> Eight systems it comes out on. And I, it has a season pass, for sure. I know that much. Oh, yeah. I don't care, I want to play. Uh, so we had a big preview go up by Alessandro, and it was he had seven things he liked about it and some things he didn't like. The thing that I thought was interesting, maybe the one thing, was that there are these... Hamza, you explain it. Was it the spider thing? Is so it, in Watch Dogs, there's, um, 
there's, I mean, it's a very serious game, but then there's also side stuff you do. There's our AR games you can play on your phone, and it, it, like you can create like uh, like space invaders within the game. Like you're you're like you're being one of those weird people who are shooting at things that are not really there, and people are looking at you like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Uh, we've known about that, but uh, what we learned from this recent preview is that there's gonna be virtual reality games. Virtual reality games within this virtual world game that we play in real life. Um, but the VR stuff is just like really crazy, over the top stuff, kind of like the stuff you would see in Saints Row 4 or old school GTA games. So uh, one of them is like you control this like giant robot spider mech and just go on a rampage in the city. And then there's another one where it's basically Carmageddon, where you're controlling like this car from hell and just destroying shit again in the city. Um, it sounds really cool. I wish I like, started. Got, I must have gotten the Blood Cry developers to. Working yeah. VR games. Yeah. Do you guys do this random stuff in these, uh, you know, like sandbox, open world type games? Like, I never do. I no. only do the thing. I do the missions, and I enjoy it, and then I'm done. I, I, I played uh, when I was playing Catherine. You have the the uh, arcade machine in the bar, and it yeah. has like a, another based puzzle game that's really good and really hard. I played that a lot. Yeah, that doesn't count, though. That game's amazing, by the way. What's it called? Yeah. I will do it. You know, like, in Saints Row 4, you get to control, like, a mech with, with like, these rocket launchers and chain guns on it. And that was fun. But then, you know, after, like, an hour of playing the main game, you have superpowers. So, like, I stopped doing the side stuff. Because usually the side stuff is, like, from old-school GTA games, there was, like, the, the Rampage missions where you get a rocket launcher or a tank and you get to have, like, two minutes to destroy everything without consequences. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. It's just... At some point, I do get tired of it, and it's focused on the main game. Mm -hmm. So if if I'm into the game, I'll totally do all that stuff. I'm a pure completionist. I will 100% hit everything on the side. But if the game doesn't really grab me, then I don't feel as compelled to go do all that side stuff. And uh, the thing about Watch Dogs is I feel like this game's going to be like either really stellar and like get everybody, or it's just going to be super underwhelming, and I don't think there's a lot of middle ground. Just in my opinion, anyway. Underwhelming. <laughs> I'm totally uh, not there. I just finished uh, Infamous Second Son, and I, my, originally when I started off, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to 100% this game. And then I started seeing some of the side quest missions and stuff, I'm like, fuck no, this is really annoying. <laughs> um, two in particular that come to mind is, like, one, there's these mini games where you have to look for the hidden camera in this, this like, radius of an area. And these cameras are really tiny, and it's really annoying trying to find it. It's That's whatever. But then there's other missions where um, you have to find, like, the hidden evil agent. And once you find them, they, like, fucking just take off because they have superpowers like you do. And trying to chase anyone down in this game is really broken. It's like Assassin's Creed level and broken where you have to go <laughs> hunting for someone, basically. To get yeah, Second game. Son's a perfect example of that. Like, that game is good, but I just want to play the game. I don't want to do all the other stuff. The best just... part of Second Son is the photo mode that they added. Well, any every game should have a photo mode, in my opinion. Yeah, like, even I golf. wrote that on Destructoid.com. <laughs> on Destructoid.com, that one's... It is... No, I agree. Uh, I and mean, Nintendo you're... needs to make new Pokemon Snap. Yeah. Uh, well, back to Watch Dogs, I guess. <laughs> you can't get me distracted. I mean, well, that's the, that's the thing about Watch Dogs is it's like I, Hamza and I. It sounds like are both kind of worn out with open world games. So no matter how amazing or not amazing this is, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm probably not going to play it, not anytime soon. I'm going to play it. It's just the open world is a chore for me. Like, yeah, I want to be in a. I like dungeon crawlers. I want to be in a dungeon or a roguelike. Or you can only take one step at a time. I want to only do one thing and keep doing it and do it well. To get out of an open world, it just stresses me out. Like, I can't even tell you. I, I'm running around like, where the fuck do I go now? I'm like constantly checking the tracking systems or worried that I'm not on the right mission or that I'm wasting my time. Um, it's almost like a vacation one that's not an open world. And I know a lot of people see it the opposite way. They're like, if it's open world, I can just do whatever the fuck I want. This is a good time. It's not a good time for me. So I'm going to play Watch Dogs. I'm actually pretty excited about it. But I'm going to do the primary missions uh, and then call it a day. And then probably vacuum because that's the theme of the day. I think the trend of uh, 
direction stuff like Rust and DayZ has shown that open world works better when you're not trying to cram a linear story into an open world. I guess. I, I mean, yeah, I liked Rust quite a bit when I... I got tired of it because I was like, okay, well, there, this is not a finished game by any means, so I'm taking a break until they flesh it out more, but yeah, that was fun for a while. Part, part of the stressfulness, um, and I feel like Ubisoft might be particularly bad about this, is that they over-inundate you with uh, things that you can do. You, you have like 10 different side mission type things you can go all hit at once. <laughs> And you're just kind of like working on just like ticking them off, just one, 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 and yeah. you feel like you feel like you can do that forever before it, without actually making any progress in the game. It becomes a checklist thing with just a filthy uh, heads-up display, like Assassin's Creed, that's just cluttered that's exactly with, what with its meta garbage. Well, they, uh, I think I was just gonna say really quickly. I'm pretty sure the reason that happens is Ubisoft or any of these big companies. They have so many people working on the game that it's like they need to fill their time at some point. They're not always working on crucial stuff. So it's like, like, well, why not add it? We have the people. Why not add it? Different mechanics. It's like this studio, this entire game studio, is just doing the seafaring, and Mm -hmm. this studio is doing this part. Yeah, that happened with Black Flag. Like, Singapore was like, they were in charge of the water. Specifically, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I saw, it was it was impressive. But I saw like a Hamza and I saw a demo of like why the water looks so good, and it was like a seven part technology that they own. You know, um, but I guess you can do that cool stuff when you have that many that many resources to plug in. Um, but yeah, sometimes it just makes a game too much. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed is a perfect example. Like that game stresses me out. It's one of those things too, where like they they. It works in their favor, kind of, because, like, with Black Flag, they're like, yeah, look at all these things you could do. That means you have at least 50 hours of gameplay here. Hmm. That's a good number to throw around. Like, hey, this game is going to be 50 hours long. It's totally worth $60. I mean, a lot of it's going to be bullshit side missions, but 50 hours! That's what reviews are for, right? That's our job, is to play this and say, hey, look, it's not 50 hours. It's four hours and, you know, 26 hours of side content that you don't really need to do. Um... To uh, to Ubisoft's credit, though, uh, as overloaded as some of those games could be, Far Cry 3, I think, did it right, where, like, the side stuff you could do is, like, just, it can happen whenever, when you're on a main mission or whatever, it's just in front of you. It doesn't distract you or take you away. It's just kind of, mm-hmm. like, as you're running from point A to point B, hey, look at all these cool things you, you do as well. You don't have to, but it's right there in front of you instead of you having to load something or do something convoluted to access it. Yeah, it would be. I think these games would be for the better if they were more willing to uh, respect our time and not just go for that. How high can we get the number, uh, the hour count for the back of the box type thing? But yeah, yep. <laughs> Watch <Watchdogs. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Brett, you saw that multiplayer video. I, I didn't have a chance to look at it yet, but they also released a nine-minute-long look at. Watch out his uh, multiplayer. What did you think of it? Um, it's kind of cool in a way. Um, so the way the multiplayer works is Ubisoft with all their games. They're moving towards the seamless blending of single and multiplayer. Um, so it's not so much there's a multiplayer mode, but it's more you're in your game and other people fuck with you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or not. I don't know if there's going to be a way to turn that off. There's a way to turn it off. There is, there is, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, people just start hacking you, and then you kind of have, like, a little circle to figure out, like, where they are, and you can go, like, hack into cameras, and they're over there in a taco truck, so you start chasing them down and trying to kill them. Um, I don't know. It's it's a thing, I guess. Honestly, that sounds kind of <laughs> pretty interesting. Then I mean, it, it reminded me a lot of going back to Assassin's Creed. Just kind of like you got to be stealthy, you got to be, you got to be cool. You can't like tip your hand and like yeah. be all reckless, or else they'll know where you are. But um, at the same time, it has like that, like a modern tech feel to it, where you can hack into cameras and you can, I don't know what else you can do. I didn't watch the video that well, close. Like the, 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 the multiplayer <laughs> Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is like the only good part about Assassin's Creed, was the multiplayer was actually fun. Yeah. We are just trying to assassinate each other. That was always too scary for me to play. <laughs> too tense. I'm not kidding. Like, I could not handle that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like that. With then, then you get in cars and you chase each other around and you raise bridges 
with your technology. With your hack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with your hacking and uh, skills. I don't know. I guess people that are into it might think it's cool. Did they show anything of the mobile stuff as well? The mobile companion app? Because that, that has multiplayer stuff as well. Yeah, um, I didn't really get into that, that though. But yeah, they, <laughs> they, they did show off the uh, companion Yeah, it looks stupid. Um, I think the, the whole the thing they're doing with the companion app stuff looks really cool. I like the fact that like I mean, you're in the game, so to speak, in real time on your, on your tablet or phone or whatever, fucking with other people, or helping your friends or whatever. It's it, everything is a variant of calling in airstrikes. Call me a. Skeptic. I know, I know. That's what we're I'm, I'm style, so dude. over the the mobile companion thing. Someone will do something cool with it, but for now, oh my god. Well, I mean, it's not just that. I mean, you could like uh, help your friend by turning all the lights green as you're driving in the other direction. <laughs> That's an airstrike <laughs> variant. That's an airstrike <laughs> variant. It's literally, it's triggers. You're either environmental pick, triggers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it, a real life companion app I need. I need a friend to sit there. <laughs> I'll be your, I'll be your Mr. Buddy Brett. <laughs> I just need a, a real life companion app. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we've been going at this for a while. I mean, we can, I'll just run through some of these things. New Ace Attorney in Japan. Cool. I don't know how they're going to localize it. I don't That'd think any fine. of us really play. Ace Attorney. They'll, they'll sit there and eat onigiri and talk about their jelly donuts being delicious. Yep. Just yeah. Jelly donuts! <laughs> uh, there was a new... There was the first image, apparently, I guess is what they're calling it, of Sledgehammer's <laughs> Call of Duty game, and it's like a render of a soldier. soldier uh, so dumb. <laughs> and he's looking off into the distance. Oh, uh, such I serious. Much more. What'd you say, Dale? I also want to announce something, like a new site feature or like a big change in my life. I'm just going to take the picture of a side of someone's face and just like, <laughs> hey, this says everything. Look at it. Just, oh, man. I don't even know, man. Like, <laughs> the funny thing about that image is it was actually released at GDC. It's just I know. Nobody caught on to it. And then <laughs> no IG, IGN finally posted it yesterday, and people were like, oh, yeah, Call of Duty. <laughs> well, what happened is... They posted and everyone went, wow, we can make a headline that says first Call of Duty image. Let's post this too. They did a smart thing. They, I think, I mean, I think people, <laughs> exactly. knew, people knew that the, the, they released an image of the panel. It's just, it wasn't until the GDC vault had the, the full uh, panel on, online that IGN was like, hey, oh, should, okay. we should do something with this. Okay. Yeah. Still dumb. Yeah. Uh, new, new Fatal Frame for Wii U. I, that's a series I always wanted to play Ooh. but haven't. The, you need to stop everything and play the series because it's, what the nah. it's one of my top video game franchises. Period. If you're I'm waiting for a new scared. Pokemon Snap, just play Fiddle Frame. Yeah. <laughs> Ghost Snap. Oh snap! That should be the new Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame. Oh snap! Okay, maybe not. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> no, I. Two and three are still. Even with their age, still some of the scariest games ever made. Are those both PS2? PS2, yeah. Okay. They're about it. Uh, Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. Unity, that's another thing that happened. There's a rumor that uh, there's a four-player co-op narrative mode, which is like, okay. I mean, they're running out of, they're trying new things, I guess. Oh, Looks good. It's, it sounds exactly like what Far Cry 3 had. In it, um, assuming oh. that oh. assuming that the campaign and this new mode are separate. Um, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, okay. Assassin's Far Creed Unity is a good name for a game made by seven different studios. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shit on it, but Ubisoft has like the highest hiring rate around right now. Hey, you I keep thought. making Rayman games and Child of Light and UbiArt games. You can do they it. They are all. funding the world economy, Stephen. <laughs> they are. I mean, you know, on that front, we could talk about, like, the rumored Prince of Persia game that they're Ooh. supposedly working on. Nothing to talk about. Well, yeah. they haven't officially confirmed it. They've got to be making Prince of Persia. Yeah, I oh, mean, the rumor is, whatever, that it's going to be made with the UV art engine. Like, right now. A lot of our readers are like, eh, 2D, fuck off. Really? They're what? Right. I, no way. 2D is the best D. Oh, it is the best D. If you like the D. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it being 2D, uh, and I feel like every game in 2015 will be made with the Ray-Ban. As it, they should be. In a perfect world, yeah. Amazing. 
No, it's, the, orig- the original Prince of Persia still has such good, like, animations oh, and yeah, like, good art. Like, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, getting mean, it's, to its roots. It's really easy to make games, so to speak, on that engine, too, because, like, I mean, I've talked to a bunch of developers who who created games on the engine. It's like, no, we don't have to make concept art. The concept art, you just put it right into the game. That's it. There's no, yeah, like, they just separate draw it and, like, yeah, I went to a GDC talk on 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 the engine like two years ago, and they just literally just draw things and like rig it in real time, and then mm-hmm. like the one of the artists from Rayman uh, Origins like literally during the talk while giving a talk drew a character and animated it like in like ten minutes. That's badass. Hmm. Well, I can make my corgi RPG then. Like finally. <laughs> Oh, look, how amazing would a Corgi look in well, the UBR engine? two years ago they were talking about making it, like, available for people to license and use, but now it seems like that's not happened. Mm. It's like gold miners, they keep it to themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I would keep it to myself, probably. Yeah, you have a duder today, Why? or actually it was last night, someone at uh, Ubi tweeted out just, like, a tease image, and now that Twitter account is gone forever. Yeah, that person's dead. dead. Yeah, he's probably. <laughs> he tweeted. He tweeted like he did a little picture, like a tease with a question mark and some past Prince of Persia images. Yeah. Uh, and then he tweeted at Jade Raymond and some other Ubisoft employees. And, and Jade then, Raymond was like, "No, how dare you!" Oh no, no, get away from me! <laughs> Jade Raymond was like, uh, "Don't, don't connect to me." And then he died, and then they called in their essential <laughs> gods. <laughs> or anyway, it just uh, came up as a mission in someone's. Uh, how have they not made a Jade Rayman character design? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. That's that's a that's a subject we have to tread lightly around. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah. Uh, it should be the cute as a Rayman. We yeah, should on we really should on Ubisoft and the last week. <laughs> we we love Ubisoft. Ubisoft though. I love Ubisoft games. So they're easy to make, I like them because they're easy to make fun make fun of. Why is that funny? It just sounded funny the way you said it. I love Dale North and Games. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily. They don't want to get disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I die. Disappeared of natural causes. My Twitter account is now closed. Please don't kill us, Ubisoft. Unknown <laughs> reason. Yeah. Whatever. Fuck me for trying to support Ubisoft. Uh, do you guys have you guys been do you care at all about speedruns? There's been a few cool ones lately. I guess I've come to realize I do kind of like that stuff. Me too. There was uh, so the Mario 64 world record was beaten. Uh, same for Ocarina of Time, the any percent run. There was a Half Life one run that was also a record. All those are pretty cool. I think I they're cool because they consolidate things that are super too long, and then you're like, oh, I can just watch this and. This whole yeah. game in 20 that minutes. That was my cool. reaction to Half-Life 1. I was like, yeah. Because they do turn on last the dialogue like it's nothing. I mean, they just mow through that. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to go through it that fast. I, I never realized that I like speedruns until, like, Awesome Games Done quickly comes oh, along. Yeah. And then I just find myself glued to the stream. Oh, yeah. of like, wow, it's look so how good. quick they beat Goldeneye, you know? Um, it's it. I feel like I respect um, continuous speedruns a lot more than segmented ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you know it's like a team of people taking on like five second chunks of the game at a time or whatever, uh, and then they glue it together. Mm-hmm. I think ha- I think Half Life Two had one of those a little while back. The Half Life One one was segmented. That just the recent oh, okay. one. So. Yeah. yeah, that's not as cool to me. But when people just blast through it like <laughs> one one complete pure run, that's really cool. I I like speed runs, but I think the ones that always impress me or anyone that does the Super Mario 64 stuff. Just yeah, it's all Nintendo 64 games, man. They're just, oh, all of my favorites are N64 ones. Yeah. There's a great Donkey Kong uh, uh, 64 run. It's just... And that one's actually the... I mean, I'm sure there are like 100% completion ones, but the ones I've seen are all uh, just... Their glitches are insane. They're skipping, you know, 80% of the game somehow. How do they so find funny. this shit? It's I like don't the know. I, watched, I watched like 40 minutes of it this morning. Yeah. Where they like wait for the elevator to be halfway through and they do this crazy fucking jump and they do a <laughs> long backflip and they do it through the floor and come up and touch the star and the level ends. In one continuous motion, they're like, whoop, whoop, done. <laughs> like that would have been seven minutes of my life and it was literally like 10 seconds. 
it's it's cheesy to say this was like watching like a circus performance or acrobatics or whatever like it is, stuff, it is. especially it is. Mario 64. You know, and why I what I think the thing is for Nintendo 64 games specifically is that that was our first like time really hunkering down with platformers and adventure games in a 3D mm-hmm. space with this mm-hmm. fucked up controller and there was this disconnect for everyone, you know. It, you know, and we got her we got it down eventually, but like this disconnect like we can still remember that. And when we look at these games, the two things we think are like, man, this it was it was hard to work my way around this game and then god damn the wall textures are terrible. Those are the only two things I think about Nintendo 64. A, a lot of like running in circles because you can't tell like right where right. your feet are on a platform and mm. Right, they were just figuring out 3D then. It's just to see someone just blow through Mario 64 in an hour and 43 minutes. That's just that's badass to me. I, I could never do it. I think something else that's kind of enchanting about that Nintendo 64 time is that was the early age of the internet, and that's when that's when walkthroughs started showing up, and we kind of we could get online with our free AOL discs or whatever, and uh, we we could start 100%ing games and like doing cool glitches and stuff like that. So going back and seeing someone like really exploit that. Um, I think I think those games kind of have like a little bit more of a special spot in our heart because because of that. Mm-hmm. These guys got stamina. They got they got. I mean, these people are determined as shit to do this stuff. Like it I, is, it's like a year years long process to, to memorize every aspect of the game. Yeah. Like literally every piece of every level. Um, I just, makes, I'm just. It makes me want to know if they like speed run things in real life. If uh, if they if they go to fill up gas and they found some sort of exploit where you, you push the hand and it fills up in like two seconds. They're really efficient at sex. <laughs> I'm sure they I'm all. I'm sure they are. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Speaking of N64 stuff, there was a banjo spiritual successor. Oh. Oh, no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a um, some former rare people uh, working on a banjo spiritual successor, and that's not happening anymore. So I just wanted to say, uh, rest in peace. I'm sad about that. I'm not super sad about it, but I get why people are. Uh, nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we got to say about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Game Boy, Game Boy turned 25. That's cool. I never really had an original Game Boy until after the fact, after the color was a thing and I had one, so. I still have mine. Yeah? Of course, fucking crazy handheld guy. Of course I have mine. You have like seven of them? No, just one. It's all you need. It works perfectly, man. Like, it works beautifully. Those things are practically indestructible, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, all of those Nintendo handles. I found my Game Boy Color, and it still had batteries in it, and the batteries didn't leak, and I turned it on, and it was full battery. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you what one's not indestructible. Plus years. That fucking 3DS XL that I almost broke. That's not indestructible. Piece of shit's crying right now. <laughs> I, yeah. When can we... The, Europe has the white ones. Why can't we have the white ones? You know what I'm saying? All white, white front and back. And I like white. The, the light pink and white uh, XL, but I'm stuck with the disgusting, ugly blue one. Yeah, I have the blue one now. That's the one that got the smackdown. That's yesterday. gross. Bad. You're drawing a blue, you fucking red shirts. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck up, blue shirt? Whatever. <laughs> what are you going to do, blue shirt? You're outnumbered. I, I don't need... I, I'm all that... You're going to cry because you're blue. <laughs> You'll be as red as your fucking shirt soon. I'm gonna punch you a lot. Back, back to Game Boys. Uh, without the Game Boy, Link's Awakening would never exist, and that's the perfect game. So, uh, so shout so out to Game Boy. Good job. Yeah. Nailed Nintendo's it. most annoying theme song ever is the Super Mario Land theme song. <laughs> How I did know. I know you were going to hate that? I just knew. No, I love the song, but it's like it's the most annoying one ever, and that, that beautiful thing would not exist. Really, you, you question that not being the most annoying Nintendo song? What would be worse? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, uh, the, Mario part, the Mario Paint theme after, like, five hours. Oh, but that's a good song, though, man. No, that's after a- five hours. <laughs> if I continuously listen to it on loop, it'll or drive it If it won, it becomes annoying, yeah. Maybe anything after five hours. Yeah. Mario Land, dude, that's one minute. You're, you're out. Because it's a very short loop. They fucked up. I like the, the sound effects also are just kind of... 
They're weird. That's a badass game, though. I love that game. That's what's in my Game Boy right now, actually. Anyway. Happy 25th anniversary, Game Boy. Yeah. Yay. Yay. All the weird blue and red, light, pink pinstripe memories. What? For, was it? Was that the stripes on it? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. It was green and black, the screen. No, the colors on it. No, it was like gray and red. Uh, I think you're on crack, dude. There was like I think you're on crack. There was no stripes. With the, the stripes. You don't know what a Game Boy looks like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the very top of the screen, I'm looking at it now. It's like a pink stripe, and then a blue stripe. Dot matrix with stereo sound. Oh, that thing. Oh. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I always just thought it was like a weird design choice. Like a what? I don't understand. No, the best is. thing is that something only needs to like exist once to then, you know, 25, 50 years later just be aggrandized in an anniversary. Like, hey, it's like the 50 year anniversary of some shitty thing. Like, I just I just thing. remembered something. So with the original Game Boy, every time you would load up the um <laughs> there would be that splash screen that had like your credits and everything, and at one point it says bulletproof. Do you remember that? No. I forgot what, what Bulletproof was referring to. I, maybe the developer or, or whatever. But, like, for the longest time, I always thought that meant that the Game Boy was Bulletproof. I always <laughs> wanted to shoot it and see if it really was. <laughs> do a, you should do I a gotta look that up. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> look right it up and finish right. vacuuming it, ready? That sounds yeah. like a dumb ideas with Max Scoville waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Bulletproof it. software. That's what it was. What did they make? Uh, that La Roof song. Hamza, can I requisition a gun and some Game Boy games? <laughs> yeah, okay, they only made Tetris games. They made like five Tetris games. I'm gonna need 20 like, copies of Tetris and a, and a Beretta. That's that pony's one trick. What? Shut up. Okay, so our no. last topic today is mechanical pencils. No. <laughs> I'm out. It is, no, no, pencils. I use pens like an adult. Uh -huh. No. A real adult uses mechanical pencils. It's the sharpest lead ever. Sharpest right. lead's the best and, lead. And graph paper. Fuck yeah, graph paper. <laughs> Dude, if, if checks were still a thing, I would sign my checks in mechanical pencil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think writing checks in pencil is a good idea. <laughs> it's a pleasure to write mechanical pencil. Like, you don't even know. But yeah, the the, the seven millimeter lead, the point. Get out of here with that! Can't do it. It's trash. It's garbage. There's a way to set yourself on fire that you can do successfully. Please do, because it, like, you, no human should be using that disgusting lead. You know who uses it? Submit to our car. Oh man, I like submit. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. Liked. I liked submit. Yeah. I I did before I found out that about him. So there's 0.3 millimeter lead, which is just ridiculous. Like you can't even see it. Someone told me this morning it's for like um, <laughs> was like, there. You just don't know. Someone told me this morning it's for like drafting, and so it can be easily erased. Hmm. Like or it's the most badass lead you could ever use, and no one just knows it yet. I mean, there's the 0.5 stuff, which is obviously for ballers, um, but like 0.3, come on, like you. <laughs> Did you guys end this damn show already? <laughs> I, I I was gonna let Dale finish his little. I don't, I can't even finish. I mean, it's just like, I'm in awe of point three lead. I end today. Our pens oh like God. Shut up. You remember the Rocky pens? <laughs> You'd put the lead in the chamber at the top, and you would shake the pen. These were from Pilot or the pencil, I should say. And instead of clicking, the lead would come out every time you shake. Uh, like a, one more segment would come out. I never had that. That sounds terrible. It's magical technology. Oh, it's badass. It's fucking space technology. We should have let off with this discussion. <laughs> okay, now we're done. <laughs> now we're done. Wow, holy shit. We're so uh, thanks for listening to this show. Uh, find us on YouTube uh, at youtube.com slash detoid. You can find the full video episode of this, or there's the audio-only version on iTunes. Search for Destructoid Hardline. Uh, I'm not going to do our Twitters because that's way too many people and my brain can't handle it, but we're all on Twitter. You can follow Destructoid on Twitter, at least. At yeah, do that. At Detoid, at Destructoid. Um, yeah. 
Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe, that would help, probably. I don't know how it works. Give us clout. <laughs> Add us on LinkedIn. Send Shut Dale, up. <laughs> send Dale some mechanical <laughs> pencil, rule, six, rule uh, 34, so you can finish. No, please don't. No, really. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thanks to Bill Zoker, our producer, yes. who is the voice of God on this podcast. Also, thanks to God for being in all of our lives. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. We're gonna cut that part at the end. We can't have that. Why? Why are you racist? I won't allow it. God. Why are you racist? I'm not racist to God. My best friend's a God. If Steven mentions sports, I'll cut it. Sports. Oh.